Good morning, friends, wherever you are, and welcome to today's Cichlids and Coffee live stream. Wherever you are, I hope you're having a nice uh, cup of coffee and a nice mug. There's one with a bunch of cichlids on it. And oh, yeah. So, a um, lot to talk about today. And I even have a couple of previews for you of some upcoming uh, upcoming videos that I worked on. And let's see uh, if I can get a sound sound check and video check from somebody. That would be very appreciated. Let me know how it looks and how does it sound. Always a mystery until I find out find out from you. Chris G, I have no more room for fish. <laughs> You know, Chris, somebody here locally uh, told me that a friend was selling a 150-gallon aquarium with sump, pumps, heaters, lid, and stand, $150. You have no idea how much I suffered when I heard that, realizing that I don't have room in this. I even thought about, like, okay, I can get rid of the 255s, I'll put the 150 against that wall, and... Man, all my wheels were turning. I mean, $150, $150 are you kidding me? Anyway, at any rate, made me think of that. If you're in Tennessee and near Nashville and you're looking for a 150-gallon aquarium, now I'm hoping the guy that told me got the price right. It almost seemed too good to be true. He's the electrician that did all the wiring here in the uh, fish room. He sent me a text, $150, 150-gallon tank with sump, pump, lights, and stand. So um, if you're in Tennessee, let me know. If you're near Nashville, I'll, I'll get the details from my electrician, Scott, and we'll find out what the deal is. So um, maybe get you some pictures or something. So let's see. Robert Egan says uh, focus is bad, but then Paul says both are good, looks and sounds good. Looks great and sounds great, David Martin. Okay. All right. I don't know why somebody had some focus uh, issues, but I had a update. You folks ever get an update, like on your phone or on your computer, and then you go to do something and you realize that a lot of stuff that was defaulted that you never even thought about was now gone. And uh, that's what I discovered at 9.30 this morning. Uh, actually, I'm sorry, uh, 10.30 this morning, when I pulled up my, uh, my live streaming software, I discovered that the update had actually gotten rid of some vital uh, defaults that I have in my live streaming software. So um, never a dull moment. So let's talk a little bit about, uh, about some of my favorite topics today. Hey, Ricky, Ricky in the house. Welcome, Ricky, Fishman Marcus, Salient Aquatics, Chris G., I mentioned already, David Martin, Paul, Paul165, and Paul165. Paul, is that 65? Is that your, uh, your age, your birth year? I'm always interested in these names. Mr. Albigard is in the house. Shutter speed a bit slow. Okay, yes. I agree with you on that. Do do something manually. Do like a manual change on that shutter speed. They can fix that. I don't know why the shutter speed automatically did that. But at any rate, I'll go ahead and do an adjustment on that. I noticed in one of the videos I recorded that there was blurring whenever I moved, and that, of course, means shutter speed. So I'm going to check on that, see what the heck is going on. Paul165, thank you, Microsoft. <laughs> this was actually a um, this was actually an update from OBS, which is the um, live streaming software that I use. All right, so let's go ahead and officially start this live stream. What do you what do you say?
All right. If you're uh, if you're new to the channel and you do like videos about fish, be sure to hit that uh, that subscribe, the thumbs up, and uh, the notification bell. It lets YouTube know that something good's going on. Much appreciated. And uh, big shout out to my channel sponsor, the Cichlid Shack over in Tempe, Arizona. Be sure to use Shack Attack Ten if ordering food or supplies, meds, things like that. And use Shack Attack 15 if you're ordering fish and it's over a $100 order. Discounts do not apply to shipping. He simply charges you what he has to pay. So uh, big shout out there to James out in Arizona. Every fish you see in the tank behind me was from the Cichlid Shack. All right. Also a big shout out to... Uh, Let's see here. Let me see if I can pull it up. There it is. Big shout out to the Patreon members who support the channel with a monthly contribution. They are very, very appreciated. What you see uh, scrolling across the screen are what are called my founding Patreon members, those that are jumping on in the first year. So thank you so much for your support. And also remember that we now have... We now have available, I can find it here. We now have an Oscar mug and a, um, and the t-shirt that folks were asking about are now available at Teespring. Just go to Teespring and you can pick up one of those Oscar, Oscar, new Oscar mugs. I'll move the Teespring Let's see here. Let's move the Teespring link. I can grab it. There it is. That's my Teespring link that you see on the screen there. So anyway, that's enough for commercials. Any questions about Amazon, Teespring, or anything like that, the uh, moderators will be happy to answer. How am I? How am how I am? Well, that's an that's an interesting YouTube name. I am how I am. Okay, I remember Popeye used to say I am what I am. And let's see here. I am new to this cichlid world. What do you recommend as far as quality of fish on a seventy-five gallon tank? Well, that's a good question. Uh, for quality of fish, I mean, are you, are you saying um, what fish would I recommend for a 75-gallon? Is that what you're, I imagine that's what you're asking. And, and what you, what's going to happen with a 75-gallon is you're going to ultimately um, feel like you need more room. That's just, that's just what happens with cichlids. You're going to want a 125. So start saving a little bit of money. Go ahead and put filtration on the 75 that over filtrates it that you can then transfer to the 125. For example, an FX6 or maybe two Sun Sun 704Bs or uh, a, a hang on back and a canister. Something you can then move over to a 125 when you want more room. That being said, I would say probably between 10 and 15 uh, fish wouldn't be a bad idea. A Z Rock. Right? A Z Rock wouldn't be bad. A um, good place to start. Another good fish would be um, Bicolor 500. A um, Sunshine Benga. You know, really nice, really nice peacocks, right? A Ruby Red. Maybe a German Red. Fish like that would be a great way to start. And um, get them small. Uh, let them, let them uh, put on size together. When I throw when I throw peacocks together that are already um, already a good size, they tend to beat each other up. That's just been my experience, and it might have been because they were in a um, in a seventy in a uh, fifty five gallon under quarantine. But um, at any rate, I, I would suggest getting them maybe around two to three inches, maybe four max. Let them put on the size together. Uh, maybe throw. Um, so many good fish. Uh, flavescent. Flavescent's a beautiful fish. Can't go wrong with a flavescent. Uh, maybe throw a few of the plastic chromis in there. 
uh, like a uh, maybe a, a starry night or maybe a um, a deep water hap, something like that. I mean, th those would all be great great fish to get going and 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 pick them up uh, at a medium size. Don't get them don't get them too large. Let them let them kind of grow up a little bit in the seventy five. Seventy five is a good size tank. It's deceptively large. I was I was over at Petco the other day doing something um, with my son and. I made a joke about help help me pick this thing up. I mean, it's it's huge. It's a it's a good sized tank. Um, certainly, one twenty five. I mean, they get another fifty gallons, and they get six feet across. That I think that's more ideal. So um, let's see here. I hope that answered your question, and I'll unpin the message. By the way, just as a as an update, the the eye biter, the eye biter that is still in the 55 gallon right in front of me, is doing much better. He's swimming around. He's interacting more. He's eating very, very well. So he's fattening up. So he's going to be uh, ready to come into the 300 gallon very soon. Hopefully he'll uh, he'll be accepted, not singled out and beaten up. Uh, it's a little bit hard sometimes when you add one cichlid to an established tank. Last time I added like four of them. So I'll probably I'll probably give the fish a good feeding and turn the lights out and then add him so that when the lights come back on, it's like they don't know. I get you've always been here, I guess. Uh <laughs> they're little fish brains. But I will um I'll probably go ahead and uh do it like that and bring him over and see how he does. And just keep a close eye on him. I have a stragatus, a stragatus in there. Uh, which is very similar to a, to an eye biter in shape, and I think is even a, a cousin of the eye biter. They're dimidichromis or whatever that line is, but I don't. Uh, so I'll keep an eye on him because he's very he's very uh, large and beefy, and he may he may see the eye biter as a threat and go after him. Even though the eye biter is a good size, he doesn't have the the bulk and the swagger or attitude of the stragatus. So uh, I'll be definitely keeping an eye on him. Let me see. How many did you have in that uh, 60 tall back in California? Window liquor number five. Once, <laughs> Well, uh, towards the end there, that, that tank was very uh, lightly stocked. I had, uh, I had some lethronops in there. I had a red shoulder, if I remember correctly, a pleco, a bushy nose pleco. I had, uh, it was a very lightly stocked tank that ended up uh, going to, um, it ended up, I ended up uh, selling it before I left, of course, and uh, it went to Kevin Green. I think he still has that red cap, or, or maybe he's, maybe he uh, rehomed it, I'm not sure, but at, at any rate, it, it's a, uh, it was very lightly stocked towards the end, and I, and I had a, uh, two canisters, uh, two canisters on it. Two, uh, I think it was Sun Sun 304s that ran for five years without a problem, never made a sound, did a wonderful job. I had them uh, filled up with one, one had uh, Biohome Ultimate, and the other one had the uh, Marine, Marine Pure uh, Sur Media, <clears throat> the Cer ceramic media from Marine Pure, really, really high quality media in them. Very stable tank. It was a really, really stable tank. There's something about a tank that has um, that has put on, uh, you know, been through a few things, and you know, like it, it, it sort of becomes, it, it just gets, and I think it has to do with that, with with the establishment of beneficial bacteria in the substrate that then doesn't get messed with, and also, of course, uh, in in your media also, but it it just gets real rock solid. It just becomes very hard. To destabilize these these tanks that have that have been running for you know nine months, a year, two years, three years, or more, right? They just they just they just become very rock solid unless you get in there and you really tear it apart, right? Do a complete substrate change and uh, swap out the media in the in the filtration at the same time. Something like that can of course destabilize it, but. Uh, these, these tanks get to a point where they just get like like bulletproof. They get like rock solid, and that's really what we're all we're all shooting for. That we all hope hope for. The um, Richard Hill. I've never done a video on a cube. 
the closest thing I have to a cube is my um, 90 gallon. It's like a cube. It's almost the same depth as it is in width. I'm looking at it right now. I turned the camera, but I've got lights right there. You're just going to see a bunch of lights. But the 90 gallon is very close to a cube. I, I like, I'm really enjoying the, the depth of like the tank behind me here, the amount of depth that that tank has. It's, uh, it, 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 it's just, I find that very, very enjoyable. And in viewing the fish, watching them like swim back into the distance and then come up to the front. And of course the extra, you know, the seven feet side to side is nice too. But I really like a tank with some depth as the fish get bigger. Very, very important. Uh, saline aquatics, I've never really gotten into blood parrots, not really a fish that I am that crazy about. And uh, I like what are called true parrots. I like the way they look. The blood parrots, if I'm thinking about the right, the same fish, they almost look like, like one of those toys where they attach eyes that have the little black things that move around in them. And, and uh, they, they, they just seem like... Uh, I don't know. They just don't appeal to me. They just don't, don't they don't, they don't, uh, I mean, they, they look cute. I'll admit they kind of look like to me, like some of those, uh, fancy goldfish that, that had to have been, uh, you know, you know, continually, you know, genetically, you know, hybrid, hybrid, hybrid to get to that point, because it would have never survived in a natural selection environment with, with predators, right? Some of these big fat goldfish that can barely swim and, I mean, anything really could come around and just and just scoop it up without a problem. So, um, uh, yeah, kind of reminds me a little bit of those fish. But no, I don't. I don't think I'll. Uh, I don't think a red parrot. Is, but I can't say never say no. I, I never thought I'd have an Oscar, and I never thought I'd have a Betta. And uh, here I am. So <laughs> never, never say never. <laughs> All right, so let's see here. I'm looking at the chat. If, when I look down at the uh, at the computer here, A. Gordon, getting uh, my old saltwater tank switched to fresh water. What are your thoughts on wave makers on a 125? Well. Uh, what are your uh, like? What's the purpose of of the wave maker? What do you what are you thinking about with regards to that wave maker? Are you um, is it for surface tension breakup or oxygenation? Is it to stir up detritus and move it towards the filter intakes? Uh, what is the uh, you know what what is the purpose of it? I mean that's the key. We have to get what what the purpose is. If you're going to use it to uh, stir up detritus, I would get uh, something that's 2,500 to 3,500 gallons per hour and, uh, you know, have it maybe halfway to two-thirds down in a corner uh, and have it be, you know, have it on a timer so it runs for four to six hours a day, uh, maybe an hour, two, hour, two hours at a time. But I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't have it on 24-7. Now, if you're going to have fish in there, um, discus, uh, silver dollars, you know, wide, real wide, flat fish. Uh, even I've heard even eye biters, they don't like uh, a real strong flow because they're, they're just flat and they get blown around too much. And uh, so it really depends also on the kind of fish you're going to have in there. You're just going to have a bunch of uh, haps, a bunch of, you know, regular haps. I mean, you could, you could probably, uh, uh, run it any way you want. I mean, if you have it on a timer for limited amounts of time, I think you're okay. I think you're all right. You're going to be okay either way. Huss Blacksmith in the house. Hey, bro. Hey, bro. Back to you, bro. Good good. you're here. I'm glad you're here. Let's see who else has jumped on. Gia, yeah, Aquatic and Pets. Very nice. And let's see who else. Whips World in the house. A. Gordon. He's the fellow who's converting that salt water to fresh water. Fishman Marcus, we said hi already. Andy, 
Have you used lava rock as a substrate? Yes, I have, Andy. I actually have a video. I have a video on uh, maybe one of the uh, uh, moderators can can pull up. I have a video on powerheads. I think it's just called powerhead and wave makers. Yes or no? I think that's an, an older video. I also have a video on um, on your question as well. So maybe one of the uh, Maybe one of the moderators can pull that up. Lava Rock is, um, and I think Joey at the, uh, Joey, the king of DIY, he has a video on breaking up Lava Rock and putting it into a filter. I think it's it's, it's great. I think it has a lot of, uh, you know, it provides a lot of surface area, a lot of pits for beneficial bacteria to populate. So just break it up into uh, maybe quarter sizes, like the size of a quarter. And, uh, you know, wrap it up in something like, you know, like a towel and then just lightly bang it with a hammer and break it all up. You'll get, you're going to get a lot of dust, a lot of small chips that you're not going to use and uh, just throw it into, in, you know, give it a good rinse, get all the dust off of it and throw it into your filter. It, it's a uh, very inexpensive and uh, it's just a, it, it, it's a good medium. I think I have, um, I even have a bag of it laying around from an, from a, from having broken some up. I even gave away some bags at one point of lava rock. That also gets into the area of pumice. You know, you get into a matrix, like Seachem matrix uh, media is basically pumice. Pumice with, you know, thousands of little micro openings. And you can also buy uh, common garden pumice and use that. And that also works as a very good media. I think you get like a 25 pound bag for like, 20 bucks. I don't know. It's not too expensive. <clears throat> Any other questions? Go ahead and ask them, and then I'm going to go ahead and give you a preview of a couple upcoming videos. Robert Egan, you're going in and out of focus. It, it might, you know, Robert, I, I think it's, it's my shutter, and I need to do an adjustment on the shutter. I'm not going to do it on the fly, but... Um, yeah, I don't know why it, it did that. I haven't changed any settings, but I'm going to need, need to take a look at that. And uh, so, yeah, I'm, I apologize about that. Belly up. Ben, looking to breed my red devil. Where is a good site to look? I can't, for life of me, find gender-specific sites to order from. Wow. Um, you got me. I've never really done much or anything with Red Devils. If anybody here on the uh, stream knows anything about where to get Red Devils, I mean, you could you could maybe send an email or call up and see if you can get a hold of James over at the Cichlid Shack. Uh, tell him Ben sent you, and he might have um, a line on where to get some Red Devils. Not sure if he carries them, but if he doesn't, he certainly would know where. Uh, other places that come to mind on Red Devils? I don't know. I just do a general Google search, see what you can find. And then and then being able to sex them, that would be a whole other issue. Let's see here. Michael Welsh. Now I want an Oscar, but don't have the room. I get it. I get it. They grow very fast, and and even though, even though a um, you can buy them, you know, you buy them relatively small. I've heard that they will will that they grow extremely fast. So I'm waiting to see what happens on mine. I mean, they're they're hardy. They're definitely hardy. Incredible eaters. Absolutely incredible eaters. So let me go ahead and and uh, share with you a preview a preview of a couple upcoming videos and something uh, kind of interesting. The, well, something I'll share with you when you film a video, it's real, it's real different to sit and just talk to you about something. That's real easy. And the hardest videos to, to, to film are the ones that, that involve a, a process like doing something. And, and I, for, for some reason, I, I decided to do two back-to-back -back videos that involved like actually showing something. 
And one of them was uh, having to do with, with a water change, doing a water change in an aquarium that has a sump. Some of you have asked me, how do you do a water change when you have a sump? What's, what's the difference? What do you do? What do you don't do? So I went ahead and, and, and did that video. And, and the other one was uh, creating a, uh, a new aquarium for, uh, for my betta fish, Mr. Mustard, right? My mustard gas uh, betta, creating a, 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 new, uh, a new aquarium for him. And that's going to be coming out in a, uh, it's going to be coming out for a, a, a it's going to be com coming out at entitled Betta Duplex, I think is the name of that video. I'll, go, I'll just go ahead and share it with you. It, the beginning of the video, what you're going to see are the two fish that I, uh, or you, you can see two pictures of a fish that I ordered. I made the mistake. Uh, <laughs> I say mistake, it wasn't really a mistake. I made the mistake of watching that video by, uh, by John talking about how he felt he had the best betta enclosure, the best uh, display system enclosure for bettas on YouTube. And uh, I, I got to agree. I got to agree. He nailed it. He, he really did nail it. And uh, so I got so inspired by watching that video that I went ahead and went to the KG Tropicals website and I ordered a betta. It was one of those complete, uh, you know, fish keeper, fish lover impulse purchases that you that you do sometimes, right? You make the purchase, and then after you do the purchase, you go, where in the world am I going to put that fish? <laughs> now, I have a divider for that little aqua top that the mustard gas was in, right? But that would give each betta, like, I don't know, what, two and a half gallons, which is certainly better than the cups they keep them in at the, uh, at the fish stores, right? But I didn't want to do that. So instead, what I did is I, um, I had one of those dividers from Life with Pets, and I think I did a video on it. Something every fish keeper should have, I think was the, or every cichlid keeper should have. It's a divider. So I took a 29-gallon. I took a 29-gallon tank. I put a black Velamax backing on it. That's in the video. Not the one I'm going to show you now, but in the full video. And I used that divider. And I, and I put the, uh, the, Shisei, uh, the, the Shisei Shark Pro 500 into the 29. And, and I replaced it with a, uh, an, older, an older shark, the older style from Shisei. I think it was called the Advance. It's a, it's a, um, it's just a, a cylinder like the older style. It's like what came before the shark. It, it ran for thirty years. They had that filter on the market for thirty years. Daniel, uh, who watches my videos sometimes over in Henderson, Nevada. Daniel, if you're around, thank you so much. He sent me that she say advance. So that is now in the fifty five where the uh, where the Shark Pro five hundred used to be. I put the Shark Pro into the twenty nine along with a little um, Aquion heater, 100-watt uh, heater, the divider, and I created essentially a beta duplex. Because I brought over substrate from the 210 and the, the seated filter from the 55, the, the, the Shisei Pro, and uh, also I took the, the media out of that little 10-gallon Aquatop filter and I just dropped it into the back of the 29-gallon. So the 29-gallon was instantly ready for fish, right? The thing you have to do when you do that, the thing you have to remember to do is be sure you treat new water that you add to it. So any water that was added, which of course I needed more water, you have to make sure it's treated or else you'll kill off that good, that good bacteria, right? So at any rate, it was good to go. Bottom line though, I go into the fish room at 9 a.m. thinking I'm going to bang out two videos. It's 4 p.m., and I'm not finished. I still have more to do. I haven't even edited the videos. All I've got are these clips that I'm going to show you. So one of them is Beta Duplex, and the other one is doing a, uh, doing a water change on an aquarium that has a sump. 
So let's go ahead and start with the beta. And the first thing you're going to see are pictures of the beta that I ordered from KG Tropicals. There he is. I was looking for a koi type of beta. I wanted some red in a beta. And this one was the closest. The closest that they had to what I was looking for. And you can see he's a he's a beauty. Just a real beauty. So there we have it. The beta duplex. I think Mr. Mustard approves. He's swimming around. Enjoying all the extra space. There's a little 100-watt uh, heater back there. Brought over the uh, Anubius plant and his cave. And there's a Shisei Shark Pro back there, 500. Turn the bubbles off. He doesn't need the bubbles. Betas like it nice and calm. Some of the items from that Fritz Nature Box are starting to settle. They were floating at first. Some still are, like this almond leaf up here. You can see the substrate from the uh, 210 gallon. That brought over a lot of uh, beneficial bacteria, as did the uh, media that's in the Shisei, which was in the 55 gallon with the eye biter. I also uh, I also dropped in the media that was in the uh, filter in his little Aquatop tank. You can see it back here. That's the media that was in the Aquatop, Aquatop tank that he was living in previously. So that's tucked back there in the corner temporarily, just to bring over more beneficial bacteria. There's a little clip for you. And you can see it behind me. I'll turn the camera. There it is in the distance. He used to be over here, right? You know, right behind the uh, 90. So he's over there by by the door of the uh, garage, and uh, so that'll be my location of my beta duplex. <laughs> so, uh, any thoughts, questions, ideas about that? Let me know. I did add. Um, Things like acorns and twigs and things that came in a thing called Nature Box from Fritz. It's supposed to give you a black water situation. And I think some people hit me with some super chats. Let me go back here. Somebody did a super chat. Let's see. There we go. Robert. Hey, Robert. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate that. Even though you're getting a little bit of a blurry uh, picture, which I apologize, I will have that corrected by this coming, uh, by the next uh, live stream, I promise. And it looks like uh, Huss Blacksmith. Huss Blacksmith comes in with a super chat. Thank you, Huss. Appreciate that. The Red Hook Silver Dollars. Chris G wants to know about the Red Hook Silver Dollars. I am waiting to hear back from James over at the Cichlid Shack. I'd like to get like four or five of them and uh, and then put them into and then put them into the two ten. So let's see here. Trent, love the beta setup. Good. Glad you like it. You know, I'm not a beta expert. I'm just kind of making it up as I go. And, um, you know, you, you, you do a couple Google searches and you, you hope you're getting good information. And I'm learning about betas. And I, like I said, five years ago, 10 years ago, if you asked me, are you going to have a beta? I would have said, nope, not for me. And uh, I've just sort of fallen in love with them. And, and I just got sort of swept up in the enthusiasm of uh, KG Tropicals and that a beautiful beta setup that they have uh, over. If you haven't seen the um, the video, best best beta enclosure on YouTube, something like that, I think. But anyway, it's just it's just awesome. So let's take a look here at uh, another video I have for you. This is a clip 
of an upcoming video called uh, Sump Water Change or water, uh, water change with, with a sump and FX6. Might, don't, have, don't have the final title figured out yet, but let's take a look at that short clip for you. So water has started to uh, pour into the sump from the tank. So now what I do is I plug in the pumps, and that's essentially going to uh, top off the tank from the sump. You'll see the sump water levels start to drop as water starts to go into the tank. I also plugged in the FX6. And this is where you can fine tune your water level and continue to add water based on the exact height that you want your sump. This actually is a good amount and would be an amount in the sump that I would be confident that if the uh, power were to go out or the pumps were to be unplugged, the uh, sump aquarium would not overflow. So I've turned off the water. There's no more water going into the tank right now. And that's about the level the sump's going to run. Now during the week, that level might drop an inch, maybe an inch or two. I'll go ahead and top it off directly into the sump, giving the fish a little bit of uh, a freshening up of the aquarium and then at the end of the week I'll go ahead and do a water change like this one. So there's a clip. Now naturally in the videos themselves there's going to be a lot of details uh, for example on the setting up of the um, of the beta duplex I go ahead and get into how I attach the Velomax to the back of the tank to give it a black background. It's kind of funny because I just added the white background to the uh, to the beta tank and uh, I, I get into um, just a lot more, you know, a, a lot of the nuance in setting those things up. And also in the water change, I show how I use the, um, how I use the FX6 to drain the 300 gallon. I use the FX6 uh, canister to drain it. And uh, I get into some of the steps, the housekeeping steps I'll take. But the main thing is I, I really work on, on getting rid of the myth you know, some of the myths associated with water changing a um, with doing a water change on an aquarium with a sump it's actually very simple very straightforward and it's not that different from a water change on any tank except that you are uh, that you are watching you know you're you're watching for the uh, for the water levels in the sump to determine uh when to turn off, you know, when, when to turn off or turn on the water and you know, things of that nature. You're doing all the other stuff the same. You're treating the water, you're, you're, you're uh, temperature matching, you're, 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 you're cleaning up the substrate if it needs it, uh, turning over rocks. You're doing everything else that you would normally do on a water change. But it's, uh, and so it's not, uh, it's not the, uh, it's not something very complicated or anything you would need to be worried about. And in fact, it's actually very, very simple. And you just have to be on your toes, which you have to be on a regular water change also. You can't just go wander off and uh, get involved in something because you'll come back and you'll have water all over your floor. I've done that. I've done it uh, once with a sump back in California. And I did it, uh, and I've done it on aquariums with hang on back filters that I was filling up. You know, you get going on, you know, on Facebook or TikTok or whatever, and away you go, or you're talking to somebody about something, or you get on a phone call, and all of a sudden you hear a splash, and it is a horrible feeling. So, <clears throat> uh, Huss Blacksmith is asking uh, about adding carbonate powder after a water change. I mean, if you're looking to buffer, I mean, I've heard that's, uh, that's a uh, one way to buffer, and what is it that people recommend? Uh, is it baking? Baking soda? There's some inexpensive ways to buffer an aquarium, but I've never done that. I've never um, added carbonate. The only things I add uh, besides water conditioner is I do add what are called Malawi lake salts, um, you know, cichlid salt. It's from Seachem, and it just adds a little bit of amino acids so that you can get a um, uh, some of the, you know, some of the, um, 
not amino, I'm sorry, I said amino acids. What I meant was trace minerals. It adds some of the trace minerals that are found in Lake Malawi, which the fish then can absorb, you know, with that sort of that osmosis thing that they do right through through their scales. Denny has a cube. Denny, I have a 32 bio cube made by Coral Life, brand new, and I'm going to put some shell dwellers in it. Shell dwellers are uh, very cute fish, very interesting. Apparently, they breed like like guppies, and uh, never owned them, but I know I know Denny loves them. Salient Aquatics commented Krylon Fusion. I've used Krylon. I've used the uh, the um, spray on paint on uh, several tanks. So I remember uh, I think the last time I did it was on a 135 back in California. The only thing I don't like about that is that uh, if you ever decide that you don't want a black background, uh, it, it's a real problem. I mean, you've got to get in there and scrape and scrape and scrape and you, with a, you know, with a blade and it's, it's a lot of work. The uh, Velomax, when you're if you get tired of that color, you want a different color, or you don't want a background at all, or maybe, you know, whatever the case may be, all you do is grab one corner and just peel it off. That, that's all you do, and it's 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 gone. So um, I just became a bit of a of a believer in Velomax. Now, Velomax is expensive. I mean, it's not cheap, and if you're not careful, you can, um, you know, if you're if you don't have a a sharp blade. Like the blade I used on this 29 was not that sharp, and it it pulled out some little chunks and stuff. But if you're not if you're not uh, if your blade isn't real sharp, if you're not good at making a clean cut, uh, you can mess up, and and the whole piece becomes worthless. I mean, you want to have one one piece, just one piece across the entire back, and uh, you can't really do it in sections. Whereas the uh, fusion is very forgiving. I mean, if you do your fusion and it dries and you stand the tank up, you look, you see some spots that look a little light, hit them again until you have a perfectly jet black background. And um, the key thing on all of these is you've got to really make sure you, you know, you use alcohol, glass cleaner, and a, and a, and a razor blade to really clean the back of the tank. It's amazing how clean it can look. And then you run a razor, you know, you run a razor over it and you're picking up all these little fragments of silicone and all kinds of stuff that you didn't didn't really know were there, but would probably show up after you put the background on. So definitely uh, you want to do a heck of a cleaning. Gaza Gummer, 1876. <laughs> Great name. Hey, Ben, I got 15 yellow labs for 80 bucks, all adults. Owner told me they breed like rabbits. Is that true? Yes, I've heard that's true. Be sure you provide them with a lot of cave work. And if you can, uh, stack your caves, right? Give them a, give them a condo. Give them a, a condo unit with a lot of different floors. You can stack your caves, and they'll claim them at different levels. Very cool. And uh, they'll claim a cave, and you'll get, you'll, you'll get a lot of fry in there. I'm not sure... I'm not sure if they um, if they actually. I'm not sure how viciously they defend their fry. I'm not sure how territorial they get when they're breeding. Like some fish, try and clear out the whole tank, right? Um, so I'm not sure about that. But but one thing I do know is people that have labs are always telling me, "Hey, I got some fry swimming around in there." Uh, don't even know where they came from. Didn't didn't even know one was holding. I just got more fry. So yeah, they they are a little bit like rabbits. Uh, Chris G, I'm confused. What is the reason for the coarse, medium, fine? So uh, you have a filter sock on the water goes through, and well, you know, the uh, I'm the way I have mine set up are like super polishing the water, right? Because there's no better pre-filter than a, than a sock. I mean, a sock doesn't really let anything get through. I mean, everything gets, gets caught by a sock. Uh, but if in the rare chance that something does, or let's say the sock is overflowing, let's say I'm, I haven't looked at the sump in a few days and 
the sock is blocked and now it's pouring out over the top, which can happen, then uh, any particles that get through, the bigger particles would get captured by the coarse media. If they get through that, the medium would catch them and finally the fine would get them. So what you're doing is you're sort of, you're, you're doing sort of a pincher move, right? You're, it, you're creating the, hole, the smaller and smaller hole that things can get through. And then at the very end, some people will throw a bit of polish, uh, polishing media at the end as well, just to super polish the water. And I'm kind of of that, of that school. I like to super polish. Or even if I have chemical, uh, me, you know, like a chemical agent, like a, like a chemipure or something like that, Seachem uh, Purigen, I still like to have, uh, you know, after that, do a little polishing. Someone will say, well, gee, shouldn't that polishing have gone before your bio? You're missing, the, if, if you think that, you're missing my point. My point, I'm not, uh, it, it's already been really, really, really cleaned up before it hit the bio. At the same time, uh, I'm just doing, uh, what I'm doing is I'm doing just a final a final polish before it gets to the tank. So um, I'm pretty excited here because I can see behind the camera the eye biter uh, swimming all around, checking things out. And uh, I love it when fish start to come around. And for those of you who have quarantined fish or brought back, you know, brought fish back from illness or or healed healed a beat up fish. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. It's it's so much fun to watch them actually come around and do better. And so uh, I'm watching that take place during the live stream here. So <clears throat> my cat Max, I have heard so much about anoxic filtration and plenums, and I know very little to next to nothing about them. So uh, you're asking the wrong person. I know that the person that talks about it a lot is a, um, I think it's a, a person that has a PhD. So I'm assuming they, they really know what they're talking about. Uh, they make these baskets uh, with a special kind of material in it, some kind of a clay or kitty litter. I don't know what they're doing. But um, apparently they get very low nitrates and very good water quality. It's not an area that I'm that I'm really that familiar with, and I haven't really gotten into them only because I get I get great results with what I'm doing, and so I'm not really that uh, don't feel like I really need uh, to do something about that. So let's see here. Yeah, Chris, that's my secret. That's why the tanks uh, look the way they look. The sparked brain. I love that. The sparked brain. Dr. Novak. That's right, GP. Dr. Novak. So I'm assuming he's really a doctor. Not like necessarily uh, Dr. Zeus or other folks who are called doctors that were not doctors. <laughs> okay, let's see. I'm, I'm scrolling back over your, uh, your comments and questions. The sparked brain. I'm about to do my own experiment with matrix as far as nitrates. Well, I would sure like to hear about that. Now, are you going to run two tanks, one with matrix and one without, so you have a comparison? I'd like to see what happens. I mean, a lot of these medias uh, make a lot of claims. And my conclusion, and I assure you, I like everybody else, I was looking for that, for that, uh, magical solution that would reduce the number of water changes, the amount of effort, things like that. My, uh, my conclusion really is uh, a, a deep substrate helps. You'll get uh, aerobic and anaerobic bacteria going, especially if it's sand and you leave it alone. And also my other conclusion is you're going to always, or you should always, refresh your aquarium with water changes. You're never really going to get out of uh, not doing water changes. Now, the water change that I do in this 300 and in the 210, and really all the tanks now, 
these days, my water changes are about um, 20%, 25%. And my nitrates stay at a within, you know, 10 to 30, somewhere in there. Uh, so that's fine. I'm not searching for zero nitrates, but I, I, I don't think that it's that it's that deadly, right? I can't, naturally, my ammonia and nitrite are zero, but uh, and ammonia is zero. But at any rate, I I think that uh, the other side of that coin of the water change coin is that whenever you do anything to a tank, you're going to disrupt you're going to disrupt things, and you're going to stress the fish, and stress fish are more prone to disease and all kinds of other stuff. So uh, at any rate, I kind of take it easy in that area. Chris G, Caveman Aquatics, has done that experiment with the Matrix, but I have not watched that video. Yeah, I'd be curious to know how he did that. You know, how how strict of, a, of an experiment was it? I mean, was it truly an experiment? Was it very anecdotal? A lot of what you hear on YouTube, including from me, is really just personal experience. And, and you have to realize that comes from my combination of fish, the water that comes out of my tap, uh, what I have going on with the, the kind of substrate I'm using, the kind of the way I dose my tank. Uh, there's, you know, there's a lot of moving parts. It truly is a fluid situation. So very often what you're hearing are anecdotal, and it involves a lot of moving parts and a lot of things that may not necessarily be part of your setup. So then when you go to do what someone on YouTube is suggesting, you get a, uh, a different result, you get a different outcome. Or, or, so it's like, it's confusing. It's like, what am, what am I not doing right? And uh, because there's just a lot of factors to keep in mind. So <clears throat> now if you call up uh, CCAM, if you call up CCAM and ask them about zero nitrates, I mean, I'd be curious to hear what they have to say. I know when you, you know, I've, I've talked to um, the owner and founder of Biohome, and there's, there's a lot, of, and, and the, the fellow over at, uh, is it called, is it Great Wave Engineering, I think it's called, the, the U.S. representative of Biohome, there, there's a lot of factors and a lot of uh, things to take into account if you're going for zero nitrates using biohome. The amount of volume of biohome that you need to use, especially if you have a well-stocked African cichlid tank that, that you know, requires a lot of food, produces a lot of waste, that's going to be very different than your, your, you know, your planted uh, community tank with two angelfish and a, you know, and a dozen neons that your chances of getting zero nitrates with biohome are going to be much better with that planted tank. You have other stuff working for you. The plants are working for you. And, and um, so it's a different scene. So, all right, hit me with some questions. Jay Fuller, Caveman Aquatics. On Caveman Aquatics, it took four months for that system to make a difference. Well, you know, I'd expect that. You know, you know, when when I started using a, a deep substrate for stability in my tanks, I can I can uh, tell you that I I really felt like the tanks were uh, were seasoned, to borrow a term from Corey at the Aquarium Co-op. I really felt the tanks were seasoned uh, after about six months, about six months, and I did some things before that six month point that I thought the tank would let me do because I felt it was stable enough and it wasn't. And I ended up uh, with some fish loss. So it took me about six months before I could, I could go into a tank and really mess around and know that it was still going to really hold on and not, not spike ammonia or, or a nitrite. And Chris G, yes, Caveman Aquatics is actually um, sponsored by Seacam, and when you go to Aquashella, he works the Seacam booth. So yes, he has a very close relationship with Seacam. Uh, Fishman Marcus, I, I, uh, the Cichlid Shack 
ships to my local airport, Nashville International, using Southwest Cargo. So uh, on this last shipment, he shipped like a, a Monday evening, and I went and picked him up Tuesday morning. So it was a, a very fast turnaround, and I love it. I love getting them that way. It's not cheap. You're going to pay 60 to $70, and that was for three boxes. I think I, I think it, that that's up to as much as three or five boxes. So if you're going to order fish, you know, save up, save up some money, and 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 pick up five or six dream fish, and uh, you know, a couple tubs of extreme, and and you know, just it's one shipping cost, and just bite the bullet, and when you spread it out over the number of fish, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. But if you if you just want to get that one dream fish and you pay sixty dollars in shipping for that, you know, for that forty dollar, fifty dollar dream fish, you know, that 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 five inch fully colored up uh you know, Malawi hawk or whatever, uh yeah, that's gonna right before you hit that confirm button on the purchase, your finger's gonna go eh. So yeah, get get a you know, get several fish. And the shipping isn't that bad. It ends up being about as much as you'd pay in today's gas prices to drive to a far away to a far away uh, pet store. Uh, Salient Aquatics. Uh, yeah, thanks. I, yeah, you're right. I uh, I don't like chasing pH. I think that you're when you when you jolt pH around, you can actually really shock the fish. So I'd rather that the fish acclimate and over time to your the pH that you're getting from the tap. And maybe your first few water changes, uh, you know, kind of trickle them. Uh, you know, there's there's various things you can do to to kind of avoid a pH shock. Sometimes if the city water the water coming out of your tap if that goes through some kind of a ph change for whatever reason uh, this is why some people like to fill up their tank slowly from the tap uh, so there's a slow kind of accumulation and of course when you have large tanks you're going to always fill them up slowly because <laughs> that's one of the advantages of a large tank is that you do have a um, a very forgiving situation between the tank and the sump, there's a <clears throat> tremendous amount of water volume. Jay Benetta's reptiles. What are your thoughts on two AquaClear 110s on a 75? I love that idea. I think that would be great. You could also, you could run them entirely with sponges sponges are excellent for uh bio but you don't even need to put any rings or anything in there just go all sponges make it very simple the thing i love about hang on back filters you just reach in and, and you know they're right at shoulder you know shoulder height depending on the height of your stand in aquarium so easy to work on very easy to work on so yeah i love that idea then, if you then go to a uh, 125 or a 210 someday, bring over those two 110s, throw them on there, add a canister, and you'll be pretty much good to go. Just make sure you uh, condition any water that you add, and uh, you'll have a pretty much an instantly cycled tank. Gi Aquatics. I ordered a... Uh, comes in with a super chat. Thank you, my friend. I ordered... A, you bettas once lost all but one lost all one by one wow now i wonder if you got a bad batch i wonder if the uh, conditions uh were not optimal for betta or if your conditions were very different from the conditions of the person who was breeding and selling also uh did you have a lot of water flow? I mean, a lot of water movement in there. 
where you're using um, a very high quality bed of food. I mean, there's a lot of different factors there, but man, I hate to hear that, that you lost them all. Yeah, Chris G, that's it. Easy, uh, easy maintenance, man. That's, that's the key. I'll tell you, yesterday, by the time I finished filming the two videos, one on the beta duplex and the other one on water changing with the sump, every time you do one step, you got to move the lights around, you got to move the camera around, you got to do things that should have taken me 30 minutes ended up taking me three, four hours, right, for setup and shooting and, and reshooting when I didn't like the shot. And, uh, man, I was exhausted. Exhausted. So, uh, Take uh, the maintenance of an aquarium and multiply it times 10. That's the life of a YouTuber if they want to film it. <laughs> Got nobody to blame but me. I mean, it's my choice, right? So uh, at any rate, Darren Brownwell, has anybody been to the Aquarium Science website by David Boga. David, uh, I think, was or still is a member of the uh, Ben O. Cichlid Facebook group. Ben O. Apostrophe Cichlid on Facebook. Check out that group. Very friendly group. Uh, very welcoming of all types of fish keepers. Doesn't matter if you're salt or community, brackish, biotypes. Doesn't matter. And uh, he used to post up there. People would get on him because they would question the science of it. Like how how strict of a science is the science? I mean, was he doing controlled studies? Was it or is it anecdotal that is being called science? So some people would jump on him about stuff or disagree with stuff, and but um, I think his intentions are good. I think that he's trying to put together a as accurate information as he can. My Cat Max. Title is good, so one of each title will help. Now, his title, Seachem Title, if I'm not mistaken, Seachem Title is the one that's made by uh, Shisei in Italy. It's actually made by Shisei, but marketed by Seachem. I think I saw it at the uh, she say booth where Jay Wilson was uh, was working over at Aquashella Orlando. So let's see here. Salient Aquatics. I am due for a um, garage gang. This is a garage gang shirt. I am I'm due for a, a new garage gang video. I um uh, I did one that was supposed to be exclusive for the Garage Gang. I don't know if you remember that, but I ended up uh, uploading it to YouTube, and it uploaded public, and I didn't want it public. My YouTube videos always upload uh, private or unlisted, and then later on I work on them. So I uploaded it before going to bed and then went to bed, and the next morning I woke up, and I referred to it as the genie had gotten out of the bottle. It somehow was public, and... I think my, my, my takeaway was don't upload late at night when you're tired. So that was supposed to be only for the Garage Gang and ended up being everybody's video. Which So you got to look at a behind the scenes and you got to see where I store my bicycle here in the, uh, <laughs> in the fish room. But yeah, I, I think I'll be getting, up, uh, getting some more uh, videos for the Garage Gang, exclusive Garage Gang videos will be uploaded. I'll also be giving you uh, what are called early access so um i think if i upload a video private but provide you with the link you can watch it before the public watches it so some advantages to the uh some advantages to being a garage gang member apart from just knowing that you're helping which is uh very very appreciated that you folks are helping me out with that garage gang membership tristan's fish room would you put frontosa in a longer, narrower tank or a shorter but deeper? Same on the gallons. Well, I think they probably they probably wouldn't mind either one. I do know from folks that I've talked to who keep frontosa that they do like a species specific. They like to be with other frontosa. 
They also like to be in a, um, a tank that isn't too well lit. They don't like a very bright tank. Uh, but otherwise, I think they probably like both of those. I'm thinking over time, they might like a, uh, a deeper tank only for the turnaround room because they become very, very big. I mean, they get, what, 10 inches or more? But we're talking uh, 15 years, maybe around 15 years. I mean, they, they get, I mean, massive. I think they fish them and eat them, right? Don't they eat them in East Africa? But, yeah, they get, they get massive, massive fish. But I think, yeah, either one initially would be fine. Noel Garcia, Garage Gang, reminds me of Dirt Mike and the boys from that movie. <laughs> I don't know what that is. <laughs> you know, one time, uh, there was a time when YouTube used to uh, send me a warning because the word gang was in my description. And, um, uh, you know, be, what are you talking about? Is this video promoting gang membership? Uh Oh, boy. Here's your, your gang initiation. Your gang initiation is to uh, keep a fish alive for at least six months to a year. That's your gang initiation. <laughs> All right. Okay, my friends, I want to thank all of you who uh, attended today, and I apologize about the... Uh, about some of the changes on the camera. Like I said in the beginning, there was an update, and I don't know what what might have shifted on my camera, and I've got some shutter issues here that are making the uh, picture appear a little choppy. Sorry about that. I promise I will have it fixed for the next video. And uh, But I, I appreciate you folks hanging in there. And I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, Start to wrap this thing up unless you have a very pressing, burning question that you want to ask. Sailing Aquatics, our, uh, yes, timers are, I love timers. Love timers. Uh, Richard Hill, good company to purchase artificial plants. Richard, I used to love, um, of course, I used to love Elite Cichlids. They're out of business now. So I would say do a um, do a do a web search. There's so many out there, and uh, whether you're getting them from China or from uh, you know PetSmart, Petco, I, your local fish store. I mean, they're all from uh, I think they're all from China anyway. But but the uh, but yeah, there's a, there's a lot to choose from out there, and sometimes they discolor. Sometimes they become uh, covered in algae. All you have to do is pull them out of the aquarium, put them in a uh, bucket of water with maybe a quarter cup of of uh, bleach, just plain bleach. Leave them overnight, give them a good rinse, and they come back to like brand new. So uh, don't don't get uh, don't get silk. Sometimes they sell silk plants, and once some algae gets going on silk plants, they're just destroyed. Just go with your basic good old plastic and uh, try and get them as realistic as you can. If you get them very detailed, very, very detailed, uh, you're going to find that they're very hard to clean. And that is the one complaint and the one thing I loved about Elite Cichlids. I love the detail, but I also, uh, I also hated that when algae got on them, right, it was like very hard to clean off, but so I was in a love-hate relationship. That being said, if they were still around, I'd still be getting more plants from them. The uh, cave that you saw in the beta tank, those, that was from um, underwater galleries, the underwater, uh, underwater gallery caves. If you're starting a, a Mabuna tank, consider picking up some caves from underwater galleries. I'm not sponsored by them. Stack them up and make that, uh, make that Mabuna condo. So I think it'd be awesome. Cat Sailor, you are welcome, and uh, I hope you enjoyed today's live stream. And USL, thank you so much for being here. And Sparked Brain and Richard Hill, thank you for stopping by. Jay Filler, and is that Jay Filler or Fuller? Jay, 
I was moving it as I was reading it. Jay Fuller and my cat Max. Love that name. Noel Garcia. Thank you, everybody, for being here. And Tristan's Fish Room. And Darren Brownwell and Whips World and Paul165. You folks are the best. Thank you, moderators. And uh, I think with that, we will go ahead and end off. Never forget, you rock, my friends. <laughs>